Hi. So yeah, my talk is uh, basically from dev to prod at Datadog. Um, so a little bit about myself uh, and Datadog. So Datadog is a cloud monitoring SaaS. And I'm kind of late co-founder, first employee at Datadog. So kind of a, a jack of all trades. So working on very early front end work, V1 of the metrics pipeline, V1 of the alerting system, um, and myriad scaling work, anything from getting our application workers to handle much more throughput to sharding databases. Um, and so I'm currently working on going from V1 to V2 of our continuous deployment system. So just to give you an idea of uh, the scope of our problem, so what are we developing? Um, so we have a customer-deployed uh, customer agent that collects the metrics, and we have a web kind of monolith for a front end. So that depends on a bunch of stuff, Postgres, Redis, Cassandra, Kafka, and we've split out a bunch of what I call macro services, so not quite micro because they handle a bunch of stuff, but handling a, a logical slice of the application. So there's the metric service, and that depends on a real-time time series service that we've created, uh, an indexing service, which depends on Redis, and Cassandra, and Postgres, and, and S3 for longer-term data, a snapshotting service, and an event service to handle the events. So we also have a notification service and um, the intake service to take in actual data. So that depends on a Redis queue. And then there's queue workers to process that queue so to handle normalization, Postgres, uh, and Kafka. So the normalization writes to Postgres and Kafka and um, you know, various Kafka consumers to consume that after the fact. So the real-time consumers, the indexing, the events, uh, alerting, aggregation, um, and several SaaS crawlers to collect uh, metrics from the different SaaSes. So long story short, there's a bunch of stuff going on there and um, can be potentially a challenge to develop this kind of system. And so um, kind of the theme of my talk is that the, that the, the fastest safe release loop is the most satisfying experience for both devs and customers, and kind of talk about what the challenges that there are to get to that. So um, what's at stake uh, for us? What happens if we mess up? Um, so Datadog is in the critical path of our customers. So if we're down, then you know, our customers are in potential danger. They can't see what their infrastructure is doing. Um, so that's where the, the safe kind of comes in. And, and so the fast comes in because we have a fast growing user base. There's lots and lots of demand to collect more and more of this monitoring data as people deploy more apps, more services. Um, they, they need more monitoring data. So we need to be able to keep, that, keep up with that. And so what are the dev challenges that we face? So why can't we just you know, install it on our workstation and develop there or just have a, a simple VM to, to work with it? So, oh man. so we provide real-time dashboards. So that means we can't just use fixture data. It needs to be up to date. You can't just check in like a a CSV from a week ago, because it's going to be out of date pretty much immediately. Um, we have many devs changing many dependent apps, um, all with various timelines that aren't necessarily the same. And we have lots of apps, lots of dependencies, and lots of schemas. So that can lead to very slow build times, very slow to download dependencies to generate the schemas. Um, in, in an older version of our dev environment, when we were building everything from source, it could take up to an hour to get your, your VM up and running. So that would lead to you know, being a pain to onboard new devs, and people don't want to actually upgrade their dev environment because it's such a pain, pain in the butt to, to get going. So it wasn't, wasn't a great experience. So to handle the problem of our dashboards needing to be up to date for test data, 
basically, we bundle the full stack. So we make a big Vagrant VM with the full intake pipeline. Um, we use Packard to do this, which provides a nice, um, nice abstraction layer to, to do that build. And so that lets us have all those dependencies you saw on that slide providing the real-time data so you could test in the front end. Um, and additionally, we, we dog food our agent to collect the, the dev metrics. So our applications are sending metrics themselves. So once we have the full pipeline there, we're submitting the metrics that we would see in prod, and then we could use that to develop against. Um, and for any kind of like weird data that may not come often or data that needs to uh, be there in large volumes to test, we have data generation scripts to handle that. And so for, for the problem of our apps um, being really slow to like bootstrap and, and download, um, so the devs actually develop against prod packages instead of building from source. So that way you know, okay, this is deployed on prod. I know this is the stable version uh, that I should be testing against. And only your changes are what's changing. And you could develop against uh, stable everything else. Um, and actually, so that the prod packages are actually much faster to, um, to get than building from source. You don't have to debug different teams' um, build processes in case there's errors. Um, you can just pull a package and it'll be there. The other thing we do to speed that up is to bundle all the dependencies into dev environment. So instead of pulling from you know, PyPy or um, uh, RubyGems remote, we just download all of that beforehand and then just update the, the VM as new dependencies come in. And same with the database schemas. So we have a, a test version of the schemas, and that's bundled in dev environment as well. So you don't have to, you know, run like a thousand migrations just to get back up to sync. Um, your your application, uh, you basically just need to run the delta between when that schema dump was taken and uh, the new migrations that you may have created. And so to handle the problem of many devs changing many dependent apps, um, so yeah, we have a very simple branching workflow. Just branch from prod and work on your feature locally and then merge to a testing branch. So that'll trigger the CI using a Docker version of that same dev VM with all the dependencies. And Packer is great for us here because you could use the same build script to output both Vagrant VM and a Packer or a, a Docker image. So the Docker image will have the same stack that you've tested locally against, and it'll run the full suite of CI tests against that. And then so that, that gets deployed to the testing environment where you can verify it manually. You can have other people look at it. Um, it, it has a little bit more data in, in, in there so you can test against a larger data set. And then you, you can also watch uh, the test environment's alerts and graphs. So from there, um, you, know, you can see if anything went weird with any of the metrics. Um, that, that you should be watching for when you deploy that to prod. So we have a pretty nice Datadog provider. I believe uh, Atlassian wrote it for us and, and got it merged to master. So you can treat your monitors as code here. Here we're defining a disk space monitor. Um, and um, so you can see the alert message is sending to our Slack channel. Um, if this space is running low. Um, and so that's nice because, you know, infrastructure as code, you can check this into source control. You have your commit history to know who changed the monitor. You can do pull requests to talk about, you know, why, why are you creating this monitor to begin with, um, how, you, how it might be able to be improved. Um, so that, that Terraform provider gives you a pretty nice workflow um, to be able to treat your SAS config as code. So once you're ready to get to prod, 
we have a mandatory pull request review before merging. So pull requests, or, sorry, code review is a great tool for us and for anyone to be able to catch bugs, just getting a second pair of eyes who has a little bit more experience on that. And um, so once the, the code review is done, um, you would post the diff in our Slack channel and then trigger our, the release from a Slack bot. So here's an example of one of our releases. So here, um, we have Dave, he's posting a diff. This, he's gonna make this change. He explains it in prose so everyone knows what's going on. And Zeller, Zeller is part of that diff, so he's approving that those changes could go out with his. And then we have this funny little trigger where we yell hotfix time to do a release. Uh, and then our, our Slack bot picks that up and, and triggers Jenkins. Uh, that that hotfix time kind of came from a, a former intern of ours who would just Whenever he was going to lunch, he would just be like, food time. And so <laughs> he lives on in our uh, release process. <laughs> and so to handle the problem of Datadog being in our customer's critical path, um, we mitigate our release risks by using our own org as a canary. We're actually a pretty large user of ourselves, so it's a pretty good representative sample. And we run a simple canary test to make sure that that's working. So once that passes, we do a progressive rolling release, um, you know, gradually rolling out to a few servers and a few orgs at a time until um, it's rolled out everywhere, watching the metrics, um, any key metrics for that particular release, making sure that, that, that they're OK. So we also have created some circuit breakers to avoid false positives. So in case anything goes wrong with the release, it gives us a little bit of time to revert before you know, sending false positives and waking you up for no reason. And of course, we use Datadog to monitor everything as our release goes out. Um, you can see an uh, example here of one of my colleagues, Tristan. So here, he, he just did a release, and now he wants to verify that you know, the fix that he's expecting to fix the memory actually fixed the memory. So here, he could take a screenshot of a graph showing the you know, particular role's memory, and then you can see it's pretty obvious um, from this kind of change point. That's when the release went out, and he says, OK, the, the memory looks much better after the fix. So th this is pretty important for the release process, because it means you can actually validate that you know, the change that you thought was going to fix it actually fixed it. And if it didn't, you need to do something else. So I think this is a pretty cool part of our release process where devs can actually um, see what, what just happened. To sort of mitigate the risk, of uh, more and more data coming in. So we basically need to handle this just by iterating quickly. Um, customers want to send all sorts of crazy data, so you need to be able to respond pretty quickly. So just having fast um, releases that don't, don't cause any issues with the customer lets us handle, handle that in a nice way. And um, we actually use console to respond quickly to any changes that we might need to revert or to reshard or um, any kind of fast config, we use console feature flags and config. And um, my colleague Darren actually did a pretty nice talk on console and scaling it for our org. Um, that you could that link probably will be available somewhere in some capacity. So if you're interested, you could check it out. And so to go over. Um, so once the change is in prod, you know, we need to get it back into the develop development environment so that people actually can be testing against the latest stuff. And it's not as simple as you know, just doing a git pull because we have, you know, we're not building from source, we're building from packages. So the prod workflow goes, you know, the build converts the source code into artifacts and the artifacts get published to the prod repo. And then you know, the artifacts get deployed on the hosts. Pretty standard. So to get that back into the dev environment, so we take any da database migrations that may have happened, 
run it against the, the, the dev version of the schema and then bundle that schema into a package. And then we publish the prod artifacts and that, those dumps that we just did into the dev repo. And then from there, the devs can just do an app get upgrade and then it, it'll be available in their environment. So that's on a per app basis. And if they need to get you know, a completely new environment or they want to sync up many any apps that changed at once. We also do a full dev build so that's, that the environment config uh, that we've defined in Packer and the artifacts um, at, the, at the time of the build and the dumps. So we output the Vagrant VM and the Docker image and then we publish that to the respective hosting, so the Vagrant VM to box hosting and the, the Docker image to the registry. And then from there, you, you can just do Vagrant update and then you have you know, the whole new dev environment with the new changes that just happened. And the same for the CI, the Docker pull will just get all the latest dependencies and, and it'll all be there. And so, yeah, so this, this is Datadog's way of handling the fastest safe release loop. Um, and it's probably, you know, one of, my, one of the things I'm most proud of to have created in Datadog is this culture of making devs happy by being able to release quickly and um, making customers happy by responding quickly to their issues. So that's it. Um, you can find me on Twitter, it's Fresh, Datadog, Datadog HQ. Um, so my talk was really short. Do you guys have any questions? <laughs> Yeah, that's a good question. So the question was um, about our prod architecture. How do we control the, the canary? Uh, so the actual canary lives in the same prod environment. It's just, uh, it has a different chef role, basically. So we can target just that guy um, and then know that any errors are, that come from that release are just from that host. Yeah, that's a good question. So he's asking about um, the granularity of the release of our macro services. So for the, the macro part, that, that comes from our, our Python legacy code base. So everything was written in Python and then um, just bundled in a single wheel and then the different apps execute different um, entry points. And so the the Python part still all deployed in one in one go, um, but our, we've been moving a lot of our backend workers to Go, so those we can release individually. Um, but we don't have we we're still working on like a nice uh, like canary and rollout for those apps right now. It's a little bit manual. So, so do those also get incorporated into the Yeah. Um, each each app. Has, so each Go app has its own package, and the Python app is like one fat package. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Thanks, guys.